In this video, I'm going to show you the four biggest problems that engineers have with airflow and how to solve them. The four problems, number one is managing airflow deployments. Number two is having actually a good development environment with an easy way to deploy into production. Number three is source code management and CICD pipelines. And number four is actually observing your pipelines and getting alarms whenever something goes wrong. So let's get into it. We're going to look into Astronomer today, which is also the sponsor of this video. They have a managed airflow service in the cloud that actually solves all these issues. Let's start with managing airflow deployments. There's actually two problems in one. One is the actual deployment, having airflow set up on the cloud, for instance. And the other part is maintaining your airflow deployment, which can be a whole topic in itself. Deploying airflow means you set up a production environment, you set up a quality environment where you can actually test before you go into production. This requires the engineer to understand, okay, how can I set this up? How many cloud instances do I need? What configuration do they need to have? How do I work with the scaling and the configuration? How can I actually configure this? And as you know, there are a thousand options to configure uh, these things. So it's complicated. Then there's the management of the deployment. You need to keep in mind and have an overlook of the actual used resources. You maybe need to go on and scale the whole infrastructure. You need to check out if there are problems, you need to fix problems, you need to install updates or do upgrades of the whole airflow system. It's never that easy. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of knowledge. In an astronomer, it's super easy. You go in, you give your deployment a name, and then you select which cloud do I want to run this on? Do I want to run this on GCP? Do I want to run this on AWS or Azure? And then the region for the cloud that you're selecting, you select the executor type. Do I want to run this in Celery uh, executors or do I want to use Kubernetes for this? And then my workers configure the workers, the individual queues that I want to have, the worker types for the queues I want to have and the minimum and maximum amount of workers for this automatic scaling that it allows you. With that, you're already very, very far in the configuration. Of course, there are a lot more options that you can select. You can also select the scheduler types. You can select the runtime of airflow that, you're, that you want to use. And it immediately tells you how much this is going to cost per hour. Then once you have this, you have your deployment. You can create one deployment for quality. You can create one deployment for production use. It's going to show you the DAGs that are running, the DAGs that have failed. It's going to enable you to then go in there and have a bit more information. And basically how this works, every deployment in the background has an Airflow instance running in the cloud. So this allows you to, on the top right, there's a button open Airflow and this then will just get you to the typical Airflow user interface of the Airflow that is running in the cloud. And that's it basically. That's, that's your deployment, everything you need with a few clicks, no long configuration and so on. It's pretty neat. You don't have to directly take care of most of these things. Let's talk about topic number two, having a good development environment and an easy way of actually deploying your pipelines. Now, from my courses, I know Airflow is not that easy to install locally. It's not just that it's one image that you could start, one Docker image, and then that's it. Airflow consists of many different um, systems. You need to install databases, or run databases. You need to set up the workers. You need to set up instances and so on. So there are more than five um, actually Docker containers that you need to run and you would need to configure yourself a Docker Compose file for this. With Astronomer, it's super easy. What they have is they have a CLI and you just, it's a one liner, you need to install the CLI. And from there then you can then 
set up your development environment. Again, it's just one individual line of code. You run this and this is going to download all the images that you need from Docker and it's going to start you a local development environment on port 8080 where you then have your airflow running. And in this local development environment, you can then look at the UI, you can explore the DAGs, you can look at the DAG runs and into the logs and everything. Very straightforward, very clear. Then once this is running, you need to create yourself a folder with all your data for this pipeline. And how Astronomer is doing this is also super easy. You just go to a folder on your drive. It's a one liner and this then is going to set up you a configuration with all the files that you need for the DAGs, for testing, for configuration, everything. So it's a really good template that you can use straight away. With this, then you can code and you can test your pipelines and run your pipelines locally. By the way, testing, you can test very simple here. Astronomer gives you the option, for instance, to use PyTest, so you can write your own tests for your DAX, for your tasks. And whenever you um, want to just test this, single line of code, run PyTest, and then you see if your uh, pipeline actually works. Now, if you want to deploy this, again, simple, use the CLI, log into Astronomer, and then the CLI is registered for your deployment. It's just a simple one-liner, astro deploy DAX, and then the DAX are going to be deployed to the deployment on the cloud. I mean, super easy, right? That's how this should work straight out of the box. Let's talk about problem number three, source code management and automatic deployment, basically CICD, continuous integration, continuous deployment. It's not going to work like I've told you a second ago. You're not going to develop on your local machine your code. The code stays there and then you directly deploy into production. Now, what you're going to need to do is you have colleagues. They are going to work with you on your pipelines. They might be coming in and modify something while you're away. And so you need a code management tool. For instance, with GitHub, it's very easy. You have your folder with everything in there. Just create a Git repo and then synchronize that with your Git repo. And this way, code management is done. Now, the upside with Astronomer here is that now you can leverage GitHub Actions and have CI CD. Now, how is this going to work? On GitHub, what you're going to do is you're going to have two branches, the main branch and the development branch. And you can create GitHub Actions that whenever somebody develops something on the dev branch, pushes it to the dev branch and then creates a pull request. That means this person wants to merge the new developed software with the main branch. It's going to start a GitHub Action. And what this action does is, this action is going to, if you configured it first, going to run the pie tests that you've set up and then it's going to automatically deploy that piece of software, your pipeline to the deployment environment that you have set up. So this way you don't need to handle the manual deployment. There's a new version coming in. You're going to look at it. You're going to say, okay, let's approve this. Let's merge this pull request and then it's going to start the deployment. It's going to build everything. It's going to build the containers for the deployment. And then it's going to try to push it to your um, environment in the cloud. In this example, I was using GitHub and GitHub Actions for source code management and then the deployment. But there are multiple tools you can use with Astronomer. You can use Jenkins, you can use GitLab, you can use Bitbucket, you can use the tools on AWS and GCP and so on. There are a lot of options. They all do the same, but as you can see, it's very versatile. Now, let's get into topic number four. Problem number four, observing the data pipelines and actually get alerted when something goes wrong. That is a big topic. I have struggled with this many times. Many times I had the problem that something was failing and I had no idea that it is actually failing. So this is where Astronomer comes in and really can help you. First of all, 
through the UI, you can very easily see the status of any deployment and the DAX that are currently running in the deployment. You have your deployments overview of a larger overview. Then you can look into the individual DAX and you can then look into the runs of each stack. If it's green, of course, then it's going to it works. And if it's red, then yeah, it's failing. So at one glance, immediately you can see this and you can drill down uh, more into which task from which DAG, for instance, has a problem. Pretty cool. Directly in the astronomer, in the Astro Cloud UI. Now you can also go into Airflow and then look into air into your airflow um, ui what's going on also possible the cool thing here is the alerting feature and i wish i would have had that before you can go in you can say okay let's create an alert give the alert a name and then give it a type either it's DAC failure complete failure of the DAC, or it's task duration whenever something takes longer than you actually think then you can say okay this generates alerts how are you going to communicate these either via email, that's the first thing that we think of, right? Configure the email and then once you something goes wrong, you will get this email here in your inbox. Or you can use PagerDuty here, I haven't tried this. Or you can use Slack. You have a Slack workspace, you very easily can configure an app and create a webhook and tell it which channel the messages are going to land and then Whenever a message comes in, it's going to appear in Slack and people are going to be notified over Slack. This also works with the phone. I tried this. I have Slack installed on my phone. Whenever an error comes in, you get this on your phone and you cannot miss it anymore. This is a feature I think everybody needs. All right, we went over the four things that engineers struggle with in Airflow. Let me know in the comments what problems you encountered because I think you have even more than the four that I have here. Give Astronomer a try. I have the link to Astronomer in the description and then see you in the next video.